Hello my lovely YouTube audience. Today we're going to be covering sparse weight activation training or SWOT as it's called, which is a super super cool algorithm that I've come across that can reduce your machine learning training costs while not really affecting your performance too much. So sparsity is a really cool concept that's going to be huge in machine learning in the next coming years, especially if you're a deep learning engineer who's working for big projects like Google, Microsoft, or any of these other big large scale machine learning projects. This is definitely something that you want to know because this can be a game changer and knowing this will help you stick get ahead. As always, the slides used in this video, along with any other social media li links you can use to reach out to me, my YouTube channel, my other work, etc., will be in the description below. Make sure you check them out. So first off, what is this video going to cover? We're going to cover why sparse activation as a concept is such a big deal and why it's gained so much momentum recently. If you looked into Google's Palm model, which is a big game changer, or Google's Minerva, these have all used sparse activation as a very, very strong way. Second, we're going to understand the SWOT algorithm specifically and why that is such an improvement on the other sparsity based metrics. Finally, we'll finish up by actually going over the algorithm. So the first part, I'm going to give you the intuition to why the algorithm works, why it makes sense. And now then we'll go over a little bit of the algorithm, plus some cool details like that I really liked and I think are the real game changers in this. The timestamps will be in the description below so you can jump around. And in case you need to be convinced more about why this is such a cool concept, take a look at the chart to the right. So here, if you can see, I'm pointing to this uh, green star. This green star is the performance of SWOT okay, when compared to a whole bunch of other sparsity metrics. So these are all dropping neural networks, uh, the parameters of a neural network to a certain degree. And these are all different protocols for doing the same. So obviously all the, b the baseline is a completely fully connected neural network. And this is uh, the, sw and the, we have two basically, you'll see two green stars because one is a SWOT with 80% sparsity, which is that if you had a hun uh, t hundred different um, neurons in your first baseline neural network, this one has t only 20 and this one has only 10. So 80% sparsity and 90% sparsity. And you can see clearly that this is basically pl uh, plotting the reduction in training costs, which is reduction in training flop to the accuracy loss. Obviously, since we're removing neurons, we're going to see a b little bit of a drop in accuracy. What's amazing is that SWOT only sees a one or 2% rec reduction in accuracy, even though it sees a five time reduction in training costs. To put that in perspective, if your performance was a 10, with SWOT, you're getting the performance of an eight or a nine, while your costs are going down from 100 to 20. That The second part is really why it's such a big deal, because remember, with, uh, with a lot of these state of the art machine learning projects, these are already hitting 99, 98. I've covered this extensively, but in most of your projects, you don't need to hit such very insane 99% accuracies always. And training costs often end up playing a much bigger role. This is basically giving you that opportunity to hit the training, uh, low training costs and not sacrifice your performance on top of that too much. Even, even if you go for the 90% sparsity of SWAT, you can see that we're getting an eight time reduction in costs, eight times folks, while only seeing a less than 5% decrease in accuracy. So this is why this algorithm is so cool and why you should be watching this video till the very end. So first off, let's talk about sparse activation and why it's so important. So we're gonna keep this thing at same simple. Make sure you watch this gift to the album by Google to show you how important adding up parameters to your performance are. But simply put, more parameters equals more abilities, as this uh, image can show you. However, the more params we have, the also costs go up. So we have more power, but the costs go up, which makes sense, right? So sparse activation is kind of a way of balancing the trade-off here. I've covered a video on this on my YouTube channel, so make sure you can watch that if you want a little bit more detail on sparse activation and how Google is using it in their um, awesome pathways network. But really, simply put, what sparse activation does is it says, okay, I'm going to take a, when I get a model input, instead of activating the whole neural network for it, I'm only going to activate a certain chunk of my neural network for it. And then really the challenge becomes, how do you attribute the correct task, the correct part of the neural network? But once that is figured out, what you've done is you can basically code different parts. Your neural network can handle different kinds of tasks in different areas. So you have the benefits of the learning benefits of having a very giant neural network, but you also have the running costs of a much slower neural network because at any one given stage, you're only running one, a small chunk of our neural network. And then you think about it. That's how this brain, our own brains work. Our brains are designed in a very similar way where we, where we have literally trillions of parameters, trillions of neurons, connections, etc. And what is our mind doing? At any given stage, you're only activating a very small section for it. When you're listening to me, the audio is being 
the audio is being processed by one part of your brain my beautiful face is being po- processed by another part of your brain the feeling of wind around you etc is going to be processed by another part of your brain and so on and so forth so what this does is it allows you to multitask it allows you to learn multiple different activities and you're not always tired imagine how tiring it would be if you had to use all your mental efforts to l- listen to everything that's kind of sparse activation is allowing you to skip all that so very cool concept so now specifically let's get to swat and why this is such an improvement on s- traditional sparse activation so first what is squat so swat basically means it's what we're doing is we're sparsifying the weights of a neural network so the, this layer uh, this connection has the uh, as a weightage of this and we're sparsifying the activation function we're, we're going to take this input apply this activation function if you don't know these concepts make sure you w- get familiar with them i have videos on them i have articles on them make sure you're following me to stay updated on these because these are crucial machine learning con- ideas that you must know about okay so what is the base assumption behind uh, swat and the algorithm so the uh, algorithm makes this very fun uh, fundamental assumption that the biggest magnitudes of weights and ba- activations are the most important and this kind of makes sense because the one that has the biggest weight the neuron that has the biggest weight will be the one that influences your learning and training behavior the most now if we assume that this assumption is true and this is a very reasonable assumption to make obviously what you can do is you can apply the pareto principle some of you might know this as the 8020 rule so what we're going to do is we're going to say that okay we're only going to consider like say the top 10 act- most important neurons and only the most top 10 most active important activation functions these are the ones with the biggest magnitudes and everything else we're just going to ignore we're going to say we don't care about this we kill it ignore it how are we ignoring it normal in traditional neural networks sparsifying you you prune the connections you prune the layers you say that these things these neurons are no longer connected this one is very interesting because what instead of pruning what you do is you set the value to zero this is a very important point to note it's going to come up later make sure you take a note because you're going to see why this is such a brilliant take so far it's basically like a standard uh, activation uh, sparsifying activation function but we're going the the setting to zero is such a game changer and you'll see it why soon so take a deep breath make sure you're very hyped because this is an amazing thing in tech and speaking of amazing th- things in tech but i got you there didn't i do you know i have a newsletter what technology made simple is one of the best newsletters when you're looking to develop your computer science ace your coding interviews or level up your careers in many ways you can see the reviews below everybody uh, these people have gotten jobs at very high well established companies they've been able to get much ha- bigger salary raises they've understood concepts in tech and finance like blitz scaling why tech and cryptocurrencies crash so much why is um, uh, w- recently i covered how india had the tw- 200 billion dollar industry built from completely from scratch all of these very important and very interesting stories that you must know about and that's got great reviews and if you want to see for yourself you can use the link below to get 2 months Com- uh, free at complete no risk to you so it's free to sign up the premium subscription is only like 10 bucks a month 10 dollars a month or 800 rupees a month which which translates into less than 1 dollar a day it's uh, it's like not even half a dollar a day and for that you get such amazing benefits and if you want to check it out 2 months completely free and if you don't like it you can just cancel your subscription if you do like it you know you can keep subscribing but it's an amazing tech if you're here you'll definitely appreciate it the link will be in the description below getting back to our topic what is swat and now this is in my words because since you're here for me and my woke explanations so basically here the swat algorithm can be described like this during each training pass so we're defining this as the both forward propagation for feed forward and the backward uh, back propagation in a, on a mini batch so each that's a one training pass is defined we're sparsifying and what are we sparsifying with as i mentioned earlier the top k function so if your k was 10 the you'll only take the top 10 most important neural network so sparsification of 80% as we discussed earlier would be saying we're only going to take the top 20% magnitudes and values next in the forward pass so this is we're sparsifying the weights sparsifying the weights means all the useless weak weights that we must call out from society we set to zero we're not changing any activation functions here only the weights and in the backward propagation when we're coming back from our neural network that's when we're, we're sparsifying both the weights which have already been done technically and the activation functions themselves 
we, at no point do we change the gradients and the researchers actually when they were doing the paper break uh, paper they actually tested the effects of changing all of it changing weights and sparks uh, weights and activations um, testing both and this is they've found to be the best configuration i have an article breaking this down if you're interested in that detail it's a lot of trial and error but it's a pretty important point to note if you're going to be implementing this so that's for the forward pass what are we doing in the back pass when we're doing the backward propagation what we're doing is we're using all the gradients remember we're not changing any of them apparently gradients encode some very important information that's we have to maintain and what we're doing is we're using the gradients plus the active weights for one equation and gradients and the uh, neurons for another uh, equation uh, we'll go over the equations later and my article already does the ma math in a little bit more detail if you're interested in that if you're like again my article is going to go over a lot of the technical fine-tuned details a lot more than this will this is just to give you the overlying idea so that you understand the concept very well so let's say so what we can take is we can take the full gradients and we can take these activated neurons and with this we can kind of generate dense weight gradients that will update both the active and the non-active weights so remember how we s how I pointed out to you that we're not actually killing any neurons, we're not actually removing any, we're not removing any connections, we're just setting the value weights to zero. So now do you see why this can be a change? So basically when we have one, w in one iteration, if I say that this active weight is useless, maybe in another iteration it's not going to be useless. And this is kind of a way of handling that. Now let's go over this little bit more of a point in more detail. So this is kind of what the algorithm is describing and you can see uh, basically the highlighted parts of what I said. The first sentence is this, the top key activations and we, you can say that potentially lead to new sparse neural networks since non-wave activates are up updated. Let's go over this in a little bit more detail and why zombies are so important. So I've been talking about this, I've been hyping this up but let's go over this. So traditional pruning and uh, dropout is what you can see in this image right here where we're saying, okay, we're gonna snip away the layers, we're gonna snip away connections between neurons to make sure that the networks are better, they look cleaner. And these are amazing, they've done great work. You've, I've actually made a video on them where the, you, I show you how they can reduce uh, training costs, how they can improve generalization. If you actually stack a whole bunch of pruned neural networks together, so you take a huge network, you prune it differently in different areas and you stack them all together for an ensemble that actually perform outperforms the bigger neural network ev even though it uses less resources so it's a great tool don't get me wrong you have to put some respect on its name SWOT is just better unfortunately or fortunately depending on how you look at it it has the same effects as removing these layers and neurons but here's the cool part since we uh, since we can uh, update non-active weights this means at every possible training run, we, we might have a new possible configuration of training and non-training weights. So really what this is acting as is we're be able to go through a much larger space and we're able to go through many, many more configurations. And uh, I covered this on my Twitter recently where we were talking about this, but it seems like when you read a lot of this deep learning research that's going into how do we mo be more effective, why is one method more effective than the other? It seems like the general consensus is that a lot of it is just traversing the search space a lot more accurately and a lot, it's able to traverse the search space a lot more. So it's co covering a lot more ground. And this is what SWOT itself is doing, where it's able to con test a, a whole bunch of configurations because in traditional pruning, you're kind of killing the network. In this pruning, you're kind of only knocking it out so you can still get up, fight again. It's like Charles Oliveira of um, fighting of new machine learning, I guess where he you, he you knock him down and he comes back and he beats you up. But this is really why zombies are so amazing. It's just this effect that what you're able to do is you're able to look, go through a whole bunch of configurations and work through them. And again, this is the SWOT pseudocode. If you feel like it, you can pause here, read through the code. I'm not going to go too much because I've already explained most of these details to you. We're getting the sparsity, we're dropping what's important, what's not important. Again, as I mentioned, we're saving the weights and the activation so that we can use them going forward and backward same here this is the back propagation so this is the reverse again you can see everything that we're doing we're updating the parameters accordingly feel free to pause the video take a look here and uh, keep your notes and if you've enjoyed this video so far make sure you hit the like button it really helps me grow it helps the algorithm promote this to more people along with that 
a survey um, it will be linked down below i want you to fill it out so that i can understand you better help me make more high quality content etc etc you know the drill if you watch these videos regularly please make sure you fill out the survey leave your com thoughts in the comments below they i read them it, they help me out if you'd like to support me for example if you saw right here we have um, annotated papers where i'm breaking down what's important so if you become a patron of my work you will be you will get access to these annotated papers you can actually recommend papers for me to annotate and break down so that you have your problems are solved on top of this if you want to become a subscriber to my newsletter you get all the pa patron benefits without having to be a separate patron so you can either use the venmo and paypal link to become a patron or you can just check out my newsletter become a premium subscriber and become get all the amazing patron benefits that way and obviously any of either of those will really help me make more content and put more energy into these amazing videos that i do make and as always i love hearing from you guys i'm a bit of a I, I need a lot of attention and love so make sure you're following me on different social media platforms and telling me how amazing i am uh, as i mentioned I've, i have a medium article on this make sure i'll make sure you follow me there so that you can see, read that and the many others my newsletter completely free to sign up for uh, i've changed the name from coding interviews made simple to tech made simple but the link still stays the same because i don't want to go through that effort Make sure you're following me on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, LinkedIn. That's where I'm going to be sharing a lot of top-tier content, both by me and by other people, and insights and research. And lastly, uh, if you're in America, if you can, use my free Robinhood referral link to get a free share. We both get a free stock, so there's no risk to you. You don't have to put in any money. And in crazy times with insane inflation, can you really afford to lose out on free money? That's it for this. Thanks for watching. Peace. Go kill on and make sure you stay woke.